As a continuation of our studies on fashion as material culture and expression, we will be looking at my honors thesis that was done last year, where we'll be looking at the topic of the role of fashion amongst the youth of post-apartheid South Africa, which is post-1994. This week, we'll be looking at the introduction. Before we begin, I figured I'd give you guys some background on South Africa for those of you that may not know. So South Africa is also known as the Republic of South Africa. It's a country which is located in the southern part of the African continent. The currency is South African Rand. South Africa was colonized by the United Kingdom and therefore gained independence from them. And after this, it experienced apartheid, of which ended in 1994. Apartheid, for those of you that do not know, was basically where the white people were the ruling party and they were seen as superior and marginalized black people and saw them as inferior black people indians um, as well as colored in south africa colored people are basically mixed race and what you would consider mixed race in america however they do have their own malaysian descent therefore we call them um, colored and not mixed race um, during apartheid there were various laws that were also put into place to enforce this um, superior versus inferior logic. The, the, there was an, a law such as the Group Areas Act where different ethnic groups had to live in various cities, um, sorry, in various areas of land. And this was, uh, this was legal. So um, the ruling party then moved these people to the lands where they had to live. There are more laws, of course, that were put into place. Um, and this king, you can research this. It's a whole different lecture. It's quite interesting. It is similar to the civil rights movement that happened in America, um, where there was black versus white and black wanting their rights and all of that being done. So yes, South Africa did experience apartheid, which ended in 1994. Currently in South Africa, there are over 60 million people and there are three capital cities which are Pretoria, Bloemfontein, and Cape Town. Almost 80% of the population is of Black African ancestry. The Black African ancestry are divided amongst a variety of ethnic groups. In the Republic of South Africa, there are 11 official languages, which are English, Isizulu, Isikasa, Afrikaans, Sibedi, Setswana, Southern Soto, Istonga, Iswati, Benda and Southern Ndebele. South Africa is considered a developing country with the third largest economy in Africa. However, crime, inequality and poverty remain widespread with about a quarter of the population living in unemployment or on less than $1.25 a day. Due to the fact that we will be using the research as our main um, case study and example for this week, I have attached the research question for your knowledge. The research question is how fashion has shaped post-1994 youth culture in the township of Mamelodi, Pretoria, as well as its surrounding suburban areas such as Hatfield, Pretoria. Now, Mamelodi would be seen as an informal sector and Hatfield would be seen as a formal sector, just to give you a bit of a visualization. In terms of why I chose this research at the time, I noticed that there was an increase in the terms of, in terms of inspiration for music and clothing trends from youth in rural areas that was spreading. And therefore I was, I was intrigued as to, you know, how these trends came about and how they were spreading and would they be spreading anymore? Um, I was interested in the way that the youth was also using clothing and their personal piecing of various items together to express who they were or who they identified with. I think we can all say that when we dress, we dress to express who we are or how we feel in that moment or who we identify with at that point in time. The birth of my research was then conducted in Pretoria, South Africa, which as I mentioned previously, is one of the capital cities of South Africa. And it was done specifically in one of the popular townships in Pretoria, which is called Mamelodi. This was the chosen area for my research, as there had been quite a few fashion designers as well as music musicians that had emerged from Mamelodi and that had been able to spread their art. 
beyond their um, area, beyond their residential area. This is a quick research summary. Um, and if you have read the extract, which was um, a chapter from my research, then this will kind of just add on to that and maybe even clarify a couple of things for you. So the role of fashion in the youth culture of, of post-1994 is what we'll be looking at. The research is conducted in a township, which is an informal area, and it focuses on two designers and their two brands, one brand being Carvetti and another brand being Bosque Bay. The aim of this research is to look at the role that fashion plays amongst the, youth li the youth's lives, as well as to see how an increasing density of its influences amongst suburban youth and township youth is being achieved. Now, with all of this in mind, um, one of the main things also is that fashion can be used as a means of communication, as well as transference of power, um, hence using this case study to continue our study on material culture because one of the main things that we are studying during this course is obviously fashion and material culture as expression. So through this research, we'll be able to continue that topic and to see how this is done within this township in Pretoria in South Africa. Our next theme is going to be fashion design in streetwear as expression of identity. Streetwear is defined as what ordinary, what ordinary people wear on a daily basis in a specific area. This usually occurs within a city. Therefore, this means that um, the various styles that are then seen in this area are what becomes associated with this area. The streets of a city are the most common public space of interaction amongst people as it is a third space. The individual's home is going to be their first space and the workplace is going to be the second space. Therefore, stylization and creating your own identity and expressing your identity can occur within the space. And this is because streetwear in the hood, which is a township or an informal settlement, is essentially done without any limits or rules. Usually people that live in this area pay what they want to wear with whatever they see fit. Whereas in the suburbs, there's a greater influence on them and what they wear. And therefore, they convey streetwear as, high, as highly influenced by international celebrities, um, such as ASAP Rocky or Bella Hadid, Gigi Hadid. They basically get this influence from the celebrities that they see and the street style that occurs internationally, rather than looking at their space and just wearing what they want to wear and creating their own street style. Therefore, through the interaction between these individuals um, within this third space, this, the, res the result is a showcasing of that particular city's lifestyle and culture. This is visually done as you see it in the way that they're dressed. And um, you can see this through the materials of the garment that are used or the patterns or um, the specific style, the trend, what hat are they wearing, what type of hat they're wearing, so on and so forth. Chang, who is um, a theorist who I have referenced below, argues that street wear becomes a means for us to understand a city as well as its individuals and how they live. It's a substantiation to a key theorist, which is fruit. This is what I think. I think that Chan substantiates on Freud's theory of the mind that states that what we need to know about human beings is based on our unconscious. Therefore, it is based in our minds. We can furthermore say that then um, garments allow us to shift and to alter these perceptions that have been created in our minds um, through the way that we see the individuals within a particular city being dressed. We then create a subconscious um, a subconscious perception of who they are and how they live and how they go about their days and dress on a daily basis. This therefore allows us to look at someone and unconsciously categorize them and claim that they and we can then conclude that they are representing a certain area 
a certain status or that they belong in a specific class or space. This is all concluded just based on how someone looks because of this unconscious decision that we make based on how they've put things together and the area that they come from. Streetwear is categorized as something that can be seen in cities. Um, this can also be seen in townships, which leads us now to our next theme, which is fashion design in townships, specifically in South Africa, as our case study is based in South Africa, and how this is still an expression of identity. There was an article written by a journalist called Zama Mdoda, which was titled South African Township, Fashion Aims for World Stage. This article was written for Afropunk's website in 2018, and here Mdoda um, discusses fashion. She states that when discussing fashion, fashion brands and their designers who are from poor areas, such as townships, are often overlooked due to their lack of resources. Now, townships are, are described as poor areas because um, they have a history. As stated before, when we're looking at the background of South Africa, townships were created to get black people out of the white cities. So they were created also on the outskirts of a city where different, different black ethnic groups lived. And this was their area. This is now a black area. Because of the township history, they now have, they obviously had in the past and now, continue to lack specific resources. And because of the township lacking resources, the individuals that live in this township also lack specific resources and can only um, access certain privileges, not like what privileged individuals who live in urban areas would be able to access. Due to the limitation of resources and the limitation of their accesses to certain things, the lack of resources then goes on to create limitations between the individuals and those of a higher income group, which then becomes one of the reasons which results in them perceiving themselves as misfits or outcasts. In everyday language, we would define outcasts or misfits as individuals that have been rejected or overlooked by society or even their own societal group for various reasons, such as not adhering to societal behaviors, rules, or through having different pers perspectives and opinions, even through something as simple as dressing different. If you recall correctly, we did, we did discuss outcasts and misfits within the first lecture, and um, this, is, I, this is just a continuation of that. Therefore, through these individuals perceiving themselves at out, as outcasts or misfits, they then try to create their own identity by showcasing their environment, their space, and how they interact with their space and the people around their space. And they do this through then clothing. This is how um, you get various fashion designers in various um, areas and this is how you see the difference in streetwear because areas are not the same and what they experience in those spaces are not the same and how they interact within those spaces are not the same. So therefore, there will be different um, designs that come out. However, despite the lack of resources and um, the boundaries and barriers that are created for these individuals and their fashion brands that they're trying to establish, the, and they still try, they still try to establish these brands and some have been successful, hence the ones that I have interviewed um, and um, also some that have been written about in specific articles and a designer that we looked at last week, Tebe Magugu as well. These designers do come out of the township eventually um, if they do try hard enough. And despite all of these limitations and restrictions, the influence that these brands do carry cannot be denied. And this is because they create a space for individuals to construct who they are through the style that that through the style and through the garments that they produce that are influenced by their 
third environment, which is the streets, which is the streetwear and their um, their townships, their areas and how they interact within the space and with the people in the space and with the objects that are in with within the space as well. This then um, shows us that through fashion design and through the designs that do come out of the townships, you can express yourself and you can express your identity as individuals through these clothing items and the garments that come out of the township are able to create an identity and to show who they are or who they would like to be through identifying with certain notions that are affiliated with the brands that they wear. The garments, therefore, that do come out of these brands are then a resemblance of positive and negatives that form the reality that is the township lifestyle. Um, specifically, in this case study, the township of Mamelodi, Mamelodi's lifestyle. This then leads us to the discussion of how identity is expressed through fashion. The brands and the garments that they create are designed through the resemblance of the positives and negatives that form the reality that is the township lifestyle, as we stated in the slide before. Therefore, these garments are designed with the reference of fashion and cultural history of the individuals and their area, their township, through focusing on the uniform aesthetics of the young men and women that reside in this area. By the designers doing this, they create um, a perspective of their designs and their garments being the blueprint of their township and their township's cultural history and their fashion history as well. And this then becomes the uniform aesthetic of the individuals of that specific township. So this then becomes a township's look. Furthermore, then creating the township's street style. The brand's, um, the brand's influence can then be um, can then be widespread and can can spread over not just the township but overflow into the suburban areas as well. As people will now notice this um, uniform and will gather that okay, these people are from a specific area or belong to a specific area. That's then when collective identity comes into place. We will be discussing collective identity in more detail next week. Furthermore, through these township um, garments or brands, Gassi fashion is then created. And these Gassi means township in um, South Africa. And these brands then are associated with a specific category and they show a journey of what it takes specifically financially or township individuals, the creatives, the designers, to start this business and to get their voices heard and therefore to create their identities and to show their individualities. Overall then, Gassi fashion and the brands that are categorized under this fashion then become um, associated with a specific aesthetic and we can then subconsciously categorize the individuals under this aesthetic and under this then identity that is created. As we look at fashion as material culture and it being a form of expression and creation of identity, we also need to look at individuality versus collective identity. Stylization is a concept that is created by S. Nuttall as discussed last week. And through stylization, a collective identity can be established as individuals from a certain area can wear certain garments similarly or be interested in specific brands or trends, whereas, due, whereas this is um, a result of their physical or social or socio-cultural location. This then creates a collective identity. Um, this is because then when you look at these individuals, because of this similarity that they have in common, whether it be a specific garment or the, or the um, brands that they wear or the trends that they wear, you can then 
identify them and categorize them as people of a specific area. However, individuality then comes in where various garments are paired together for individuals' daily outfits with the aim of them showing off their individuality. So what makes them unique and what they want to communicate with the world specifically about themselves and who they are. We can then conclude and say that individuality is an extension of the individual's group identity, therefore, which is also collective identity. People, um, people unconsciously tend to associate aesthetics choices with identity. This occurs particularly within racialized identities. It's achieved um, through humans concluding on this by looking at an individual's aesthetic, which would most likely include their race and what they are wearing. Therefore, in the debate of individuality versus collective identity, it's important to note that individuality comes in with the way that you pair your garments together, the way that you aim to express yourself and the way that you communicate through your outfit who you are and who you would like to be perceived as. Whereas a collective identity is the result of individuals from a certain area wearing certain garments that are similar or that have a similarity between them because of their physical and socio-cultural location. I know this lecture was a little bit long, but thank you so much for bearing with me. Thank you so much for bearing with me in today's lecture. Next week, we will be discussing collective identity in a little bit more detail, as well as um, looking at how that relates to fashion overall. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. See you next week.